19 Secret Minecraft Features You Should Try Minecraft doesn't have much in the way of a tutorial, thank god, so some updates can slip through the cracks. So, these are the sneaky features that you need to try out right away. And hey, for some reason, YouTube tells me that no one's ever subscribed upside down. So, if you're down to be the first, flip your device around and aim for that red button above. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number 1. Planting crops in Minecraft seems like a fairly easy concept. I mean, you take seeds, you put it into the dirt, right next to water, and you're probably good. But even then, according to Minecraft's code, there is still a proper way to grow your crops. For some reason, Minecraft crops actually do grow faster when they're placed in a row. So if you want to get more bang for your buckwheat, you gotta place those suckers into a straight line. Now, I have no idea why this happens, and clearly I have no farm experience in real life to know if it's real. But hey, at least going forward, you know the proper way to get your carrots in a line. Number 2. If you've ever used bone meal on grass, then you already know that it's pretty efficient at getting you roses, tulips, and the like. But its true flower power doesn't just stop there. As it turns out, if you plonk down a too tall flower and you want to get a duplicate, all you gotta do is bone meal that one too tall flower. Just like that, another one pops off, and you got probably the easiest farm in the game. Personally, I've spent way too much time throwing bone juice into a sunflower and watching these things pop off. So if you're looking to have storage upon storage of dye, this is the way to get it. But just make sure that your composters can handle all that new demand. Number 3. When Minecraft added in the new stone blocks, it added so much more variety to our builds. And I've personally gotten a lot of use out of andesite since it got added in. But for some reason, I never seem to have enough after a mining trip. So luckily, if you also run into that problem, it's actually possible to craft andesite using diorite and cobblestone. Now, I didn't know this until recently, but sure enough, if you put them into the crafting grid, you're able to get some fresh andesite out of those two other blocks. And I guess that means you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but I'm still personally not a fan of diorite. So for its case, I'm glad it has a use now. Number 4. Minecraft walls seem to have a pretty obvious use case, which is, of course, being a wall. But as it turns out, when they help out in redstone, they can do so much more. With the way that a row of walls updates when you attach a block to the top one, you're actually able to use walls to send a redstone signal down instantaneously. Just like that, they all change their look, and then the bottom one gets detected by an observer. So if you're looking to trigger a pulse down into your minds, there's no need to set up a complicated circuit. Instead, just place a bunch of walls like this, and you're good to go. This is truly a win-win situation. Number 5. Have you ever been at an enchantment table and the three options listed just aren't gonna cut it? Well, don't sweat it, because the easy way to clear the board is just by enchanting another item. So if you're not able to find the perfect level 30 enchantment for your diamond sword, then all you gotta do is throw a stone shovel into the thing, enchant it at level 1, and then you completely re-roll all enchantments in the table. This can be great for all those times that you're just seeing on breaking 3 down in that bottom slot. And plus, you can even grindstone the cheap item to get some of that EXP back. And it's the reason I always keep some kind of garbage tool down there next to my lapis. Number 6. Clearly, through the help of anvils, every item in the game can be named. But what you might not know is that sometimes those names have special properties. For example, if you want to delineate between your valuables chest and your garbage chest, then you don't just have to do that with an item frame. But rather, if you nickname one of these in an anvil and then place it down, sure enough, as soon as you check the inventory screen, that new name is going to be listed right up at the top, making it even easier to differentiate between your storage. And personally, I like to use this to delineate between the input chest or redstone builds so that I don't need an unnecessary sign next to it. Number 7. Anyone who's ever tried to attach a lot of enchantments to a pickaxe knows that it's not exactly an easy task. But using this optimized method that Nembon lays out, it's actually possible to get more than 30 enchantments onto a Minecraft item. Basically, the way that this works is that every time you alter the item, it gets a little bit higher in the anvil cost. Although, if you start the process with an already enchanted item, you knock off a couple steps. And then, every time you add on a new enchantment book, it has the same cost base as the regular item, then you start to get more bang for your buck. Buck. And better yet, you can subvert Mo Yang's limit while doing it. Number 8. Anyone who's ever put a hopper inside their world knows that these things can't pull items through full blocks. Slabs are fine, but regular blocks are a no-go. That is, until you put the hopper inside of a minecart. Yeah, for some reason, when you put this entity together, all of a sudden it's able to pull items through full blocks. So if you're capable of setting up the rail system underneath your floor, then this is actually a way to get a proper item retrieval system through an actual farm. Just keep in mind that it is going to take a little while for the hopper minecart to get over to where it needs to pick up. It's just the price you pay for breaking the laws of physics. Number 9. Magma blocks sound like a real force to be reckoned with, 
But as it turns out, they've got one crucial flaw. For all the fear that the name gives off, as it turns out, if you step onto a magma block and then just hit the shift key, all of a sudden, you're immune to damage. For some reason, all it takes is getting into a squad formation to save yourself from burning. Who knew? And honestly, I'm kinda sad that the same doesn't work in lava. Really, every time I see this, I think it's a bug, but sure enough, until it gets patched out, it's a feature, ladies and gentlemen. And it's one that I think you should definitely take advantage of. Number 10. How many times have you been looking for a specific block in a chest full of just junk? And since there's no built-in inventory sorting, it's gonna take forever to find the thing you're looking for. Especially when your eyes are as bad as mine. So thank god for this trick that the game never tells you about. As some of you might know, if you hold on to an item and then shift click into the inventory, all of that item will be moved over to the different container. Really, this is such a helpful feature and it's one that I had to find out through hearsay. And for me personally, I get loads of mileage out of this thing, especially when I play Hunger Games. Number 11. Slime block trampolines are a great thing, but for some reason, when you hold shift to try and accelerate down faster, it just breaks your legs. I mean, sure, it cancels out the bounce, but it also cancels out your life bar, so that's not gonna work. Really, the way to cancel out any reverberations from a slime block is just by holding down the space bar and impact. That way, the game settles you down to an equilibrium, and it doesn't break your femur in the process. So if you ever put a slime block into your fall chamber, you just gotta remember, hold down that space bar and stay the heck away from the shift key. Number 12. Much to everyone's chagrin, Minecraft doesn't have a wrench item. But if you're in creative mode, you might not know something called the debug stick. It's nowhere to be found in the creative menu, you just gotta summon one of these into yourself. But as soon as you get one, you're able to edit around block states. Meaning if you want to rotate around a certain redstone circuit or make that stair look pretty, sure enough, this is the way to do it. I personally still want one of these accessible in survival mode, especially for all the glazed terracotta, but hey, at least for the time being, it is nice to know that you can get it in creative. Number 13. When you're looting an end city, you're sure to get in a sticky situation. And if you're not ready for that fall damage, you might want to know this one. Because, as it turns out, if you're up in the air and you eat one of those chorus fruits, then you can actually get teleported right back down to the ground. Which, when you got the levitation effect, might be all you need to save your life. And while that can help you get unstuck between a rock and a hard place, what if you're trying to get in one? And by that I mean, what if you're trying to trespass? Well, the chorus fruit is your friend too. If you eat one of these outside of a large structure, then you're actually able to teleport inside of the building. But just make sure to have enough in your hotbar to get out. Number 14. If you're like me, you love the soul speed enchantment, but the look of soul soil just really isn't doing it for your base. In that case, no worries, because even if you put carpet down or slabs on top of the other block, you're still able to get the full effect of soul speed, meaning you can run around with style and speed without having to look at all the brown icky black in the floor, to use the technical term. Proving that this might just be the way to get the full mileage out of the enchantment without having to give up your floor's facade. Number 15. In the middle of building a big project, inventory management can be a real hassle. So if you place down a certain block earlier, but now you don't want to go searching through your inventory, all you gotta do is hit the middle click button and it'll put it right in your hotbar. And for even more help in that game mode, if you hold control and middle mouse when you pick block, then it'll actually give you that exact thing with the NBT data. And then every time that you place it down, it's gonna be exactly like the one that you just cloned. Meaning if you want a copy of a command block with a specific command or a chest with specific items in it, this is the easiest way to get it into your inventory. Number 16. When I'm playing in creative mode, my inventory always gets full of such junk. So for that case, instead of just dragging everything over to this X, what you might not know is that if you actually shift click that same button, it gets rid of everything in your inventory. And what I love is just how thorough it is. It gets rid of your hotbar, your main inventory, armor, offhand slots, everything, you name it. And really, I'm surprised the game doesn't tell you about this at all. Because frankly, I can't imagine creative mode without it. And ever since I found out about it, it's let me transition between creative builds with ease. Number 17. This is a recent update that might have passed by your radar. And I know for most of my friends, it was definitely a surprise. For so long in Minecraft history, the quickest way to change your game mode was either by typing in the command or using third party mods like too many items. But in recent updates of the game, you're now able to hit F3 and F4 at the same time and then scroll through the other game modes. You even get a handy menu to help you know which one's which. And I can tell you for sure that in my experience, this definitely helped to speed up some of the recording processes for the videos. And I'll definitely notice its absence when playing earlier versions of the game. Number 18. For most players, the F3 commands start and stop by opening up this menu, which I'll fully admit is a really helpful menu and if it was just that, I'd totally be down for it. But that just makes it so much cooler that there's so much more you can do. Like why not hitting F3 and B to toggle on hitboxes? Or if your chunks aren't loading right, then why not just hit F3 and A? 
If you've ever wondered why some people can see the full item durability, this is how. You just hit F3 and H, and boom, there it is. And really, if you're flying through the end without looking at F3 and G, you're doing yourself a disservice. I highly recommend going over to the wiki and memorizing a few of these commands before your next session. Number 19. Spawn proofing in Minecraft most of the time just feels like guesswork. I mean, it seems plenty bright, but somehow that creeper's still in my house. So if you want to be thorough, you should know that you can actually view the proper light level in the F3 debug menu. On the left side below the facing tag, you can see block light level. Now for making sure that monsters don't spawn, you always want to have that light level somewhere above a 7, since that means that even at night, the mob isn't going to spawn there. It might help for brushing up some of the rougher edges to your spawn proofing. And trust me, when this makes the difference between all monsters and none of them, you're going to want to make that latter option. And with that folks, discover that not so secret sub button below, and have a good one, alright?